a greenhouse. And that's where I'm going to talk about what we're doing in Wageningen. Um, harsh circumstances on Mars, it's really cold, 60 to 80 degrees below zero, almost no air, cosmic radiation because there is no electromagnetic field around Mars, circumstances in which I think plants cannot grow. So we go indoors, a greenhouse. Is it going to look something like this? This was a story about our research, by the way, uh, on National Geographic. Um, I hope so, but I don't think so. Because this still would allow cosmic radiation to reach the plants. And we cannot survive it, but plants cannot either. So I will think it will look a bit like this. Ah, I know, everybody knows about the, the hobbits, I see. So, a house that is covered with regolith, at least one meter to protect us from the radiation. Also for my greenhouse, that means I need LED lights, uh, I'm indoors, but people can walk into that as well. And that's also handy. So I have a controlled environment instead of a very wild, very difficult, impossible environment outside. Of course, it costs energy. Now, I need soil because I want to use as much as possible as is available on Mars. Do we have soil from Mars on Earth? No, I don't think so. Well, there is some. I brought one. This is really from Mars, it's for meteorite, but I cannot use it. It's very expensive. This costs about 200 euros. Doing an experiment, I need hundreds of kilos, so it would be very expensive. It would be almost expensive as a uh, rocket, but um, there is one extra problem. It enters the atmosphere, it changes, it burns, so it's not anything that resembles anymore what you would find on Mars. So there's a solution for this. We got it from NASA. NASA made a regolith, a simulant, that is very similar to what you would find on Mars. And that's what we are using to grow plants on. And I got it with me, so if you come later then you can see how it looks like. But it's quite similar. And it comes from Hawaii, so if you want to scoop it yourself, nice trip. This is my team. Um, my Alain and Joop are busy with our first experiment here. Ruth is adding seeds to the pots, small pots with sand. And here at my back, we are harvesting. That's of course what you want to do. In our first experiment, we had 14 different plant species, not only crops, because we didn't know what would happen. NASA couldn't even tell us what would happen if we would add water to the soil. And of course, you need water for plants to grow. It's essential. Luckily, it's available on Mars in the form of ice, so we can use that as well. We got 14 species, 840 pots, which is a lot, I can tell you. And we had in each pot five seeds. That's 4,200 seeds. Each seed was followed indivi individually. Why that many? I had very low expectations on the Martian soil. I know it's poor, there are heavy metals in it. Um, I didn't expect many things to happen. Maybe they will germinate and that's it. So the more seeds you have, the bigger the chance is that you actually measure something. Very, very surprised by our results. Because this was ha what happened on the Martian soil simulant. Totally to our surprise. We had reflex stone grub growing beautifully. It ended up in newspapers. We had in the middle Cress, you can eat it, of course, on your salad, as a salad. And we also had sting nettle. Well, you could eat it, but we had wild plants in it in the experiment to see if anything would grow, because they can ha handle lots of difficult circumstances. Now, what did the grass do? On the 5th of May, everybody was celebrating Wageningen, hè, our national holiday, in the city center, I was in the greenhouse because I saw maybe there will be a flower. And it did. And there's something we didn't expect. And it is, of course, it's important. You don't eat the grass flowers, but you need the flowers because you need seeds. 
if you would eat everything you have sown, your whole batch on Mars, then there's nothing left and you have to fly a new seed. So what we also want and need are plants that flower and form seeds. Otherwise, it will end up after one harvest. So this was a really, really important result. Well, I don't only look at Mars. I will also look at the moon. So is it possible to grow plants on the moon? Just one slide about that. I know Bas likes this because this is much more difficult to do. This was the only plant that flowered on the Martians on the moon soil. It was field mustard, a wild plant. Well, you can see there's a little something that looks like a flower. The day after I took this, I thought it will flower, but it died the day afterwards. So it's much more difficult to grow crops on moon soil. So in that in that case, it's good to go to Mars, exactly, Bas. However, for a scientist, this of course is much more interesting because this is a real challenge. <laughs> but not only were we able to get flowers, if you have flowers you want seeds. We learned something I forgot about, but it's very obvious. If you want seeds, then you need pollination and you need bees or bumblebees to pollinate them. We didn't think of that, the greenhouse is totally isolated, so I did it by hand with a little paintbrush. That's something you cannot do on Mars if you want to have enough food. So we have to think about that. Maybe we have to bring in bumblebees. I like that because I like to say bumblebees. Nice word. But also bumblebees are very handy because bumblebees, you can hibernate them in winter. So if you go for six months on travel, you can just hibernate them. And if you're there, then they can wake up and do their work. So that's handy. It's much handier than lots of other insects, for instance, bees. Or humans. Yeah. <laughs> you don't sleep for six months. Um, we were not able to get uh, seeds for the ray, which we also had in the experiment, although I did this, but it didn't work. This was the experiment in which we conducted in 2013. In 2014, no, 2015, we had a follow-up experiment, much more simple. We had trays that was different. Instead of pots, we had only crops. And we mixed organic matter to the soil. There is no organic matter on Mars, of course, because there is no life. Maybe there was life, but there's no life now, I think. So what do we do? The first uh, series of crops is not for consumption, but is mostly for growing plants and cutting them under to manure the soil, because the soil is very nutrient poor, especially in nitrogen, and that's necessary for plants. That's why we have peas in the middle. Peas can do a trick, they can manure the soil. So that's what we want to use. Here you see the seeds, all different types, and here you see what happened after 10 days. Everything germinated, it went very well. Adding organic matter helped us a lot. It also solved the problem of watering the plants, which was a problem in our first experiment. And by the way, this also solved lots of problems we had on the moon soil, because there we also had similar results. Well, this was after a couple of months, we were able to grow all kinds of crops. We had radishes. The peas were flowering and were forming pots, so something to eat. And we even had tomatoes, so you can have a tomato on Mars. And this top tomato is very famous because it went all over the world. Not as a tomato, but digitally, as you may understand. Now, for 2016, our experiment this year is totally about food safety. There are a lot of heavy metals in the soil. That is no problem as long as the plants do not take them up. But if they take them up with the water solution, then it could cause problems. The plants will eat, uh, the plants will grow, but if we eat them, we could get sick. There is lead in it, there is mercury in it, there's chrome in it. So all kinds of heavy metals that could make us sick. Plants don't bother about that. They just grow, but if you eat them, you could die. And that wouldn't help if you're on Mars. So that's something we have to prevent. Uh, we, we harvested even, 
even this morning I harvested, oh, this side, uh, green beans. So we already have four harvests also on Martian soil. Next step is to check them for heavy metals. We were not totally there that, there yeah, yet. Well, I had to put this in. We have potatoes this year also for the first time this in, the, in this experiment. Not only because Mark Watney did it in the movie The Martian. I trust everybody has seen it. You can see him over here. But it's also still the most nutritional uh, crop we have. And if you need energy to work, the, the potato is still it. So forget about quinoa or so. Take a potato. But it needs a lot of space. And that we could only handle in this experiment with bigger pots. Now, one of the things, I even commented on it uh, in my column, as I thought, well, that are odd-looking potatoes. Are they from plastic? Well, the movie maker said, no, they're real. And I thought, they look totally different from what I'm used to. But now look at mine. They also grow up instead of growing wide. And I think that has to do with light, because this, although they are in a greenhouse, we have very good lights in there, it's still quite dark compared to outside, so they grow up. And I suspect that is something will ha that will happen on Mars as well, so there will be differences. Now, you can follow me, Wamelink underscore Wiegel, on Twitter. We have a Facebook page which is updated frequently, so you can follow our experiments. We still need some help with the finance of the analysis. But at the end of the experiment, if we know it's safe, so there are no heavy metals in the tomatoes and the potatoes and in the beans, we will have a meal for people who are invited and who support us. So who dares, you're able to come and taste how it tastes a tomato grown on Martian soil. Thank you.